Hey guys, this is Aaron Carmen from AXE Electronic, back with another video in our circuit analysis lecture series. So, I want to do something a little bit different today. Uh, so, as, as you can see, I've got the webcam on me. Uh, I'm here, I'm on my keyboard, I've got a different computer going right now. And the reason for this is because I want to show you a little piece of software that I really like using, and I think is very beneficial to know, and very easy to use once you get the hang of it, but there is kind of a learning curve. So I wanted to introduce that to you in a very friendly way uh, using the knowledge that we've gained so far. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take this last problem that we did in the previous video, number five, and I'm going to implement this in the software. And what the software is going to do, uh, the software is called LT Spice, by the way. So LT Spice, uh, the LT in it is linear technologies because it used to be owned by linear, now it's owned by analog. Uh, so they made this simulation software uh, based on SPICE and SPICE is just an acronym that means simulation program with integrated circuit emphasis SP simulation program IC integrated circuit emphasis E so SPICE so they, ma they made these guys at Linear they made this simulation software and this whole platform and they provided a whole bunch of libraries uh, it's a really powerful piece of software they made it free Okay, so that is really beneficial for guys uh, like me who really don't want to shell out for some uh, some powerful circuit simulation software, and for people who you know they may not want to get a purchase order from their boss, you know they may not want to have to jump through all the hoops that's required to spend money at their company. LT Spice is a pretty good is a pretty good substitute um, for. Uh, frankly, it's not even a substitute. It's just a really good piece of software that I really do enjoy, use pretty frequently, and that I encourage everyone to learn as much as possible because it really can benefit you. So today we're going to learn a little bit about that. First thing I wanted to show you is this is the page for it, LT Spice. You can see it's a high performance spice simulation software. So this high performance spice simulation software, like I said, uh, it's free and it's going to completely solve your circuits and as long as you do everything correctly, which we'll talk about so you, that we make sure you do. Uh, so you can come down here, download it. It's really streamlined, really kind of trimmed all the fat from this program so it's really really quick download very easy to use and like I said it comes with a ton of libraries that you can use uh, to sort of learn the ropes if you don't have someone like me teaching you so once you get that downloaded you can go ahead and run it for the first time and it might ask you to do some initial setup that's fine this is what you're going to see though once you get past all that so they have this nice little background I'm not sure what it is still don't know what it is um, but they have this nice background this is not, this is just kind of the home screen right now. You haven't started anything yet. So the first thing you're going to want to do is that you're going to want to create a schematic. And a schematic is the place where, you know, it's a schematic. It's the place where your circuit diagram is going to live and where you're going to make the majority of your changes. So the way you can do that is that you can, there's a few ways you can do it. The first one is you can come over here and press new schematic in the top left corner. Okay, and that's one way of doing it. You could also press file, new schematic. You'll see here that there is a shortcut, control in just makes you a new schematic. I'm going to do that because learning the shortcuts makes it very, very easy. So once you press control in, it'll start a new schematic. Uh, mine looks a little bit different because I've customized it like for presentations and stuff like that. So I made it a white background and uh, black components, black wires, everything like that. Uh, you can change that if you want to, to your own preferences here, change color preferences and you can change uh, everything you want here. So now we've got a schematic. First thing we need to do is we need to start placing these components. So here, let me sort of make a split screen. Ta -da. So we've got it like this. So we want to oh, I mean, we want to move this whole schematic over to LT Spice. Okay. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six resistors, a voltage source. So it's a decently complicated schematic. So what we can do is that we can come over here. Let's go ahead and place the voltage source first. So look in this toolbar and you'll see that there's not anything on here that says voltage source. You know, you have, this is your ground, label, uh, resistor, capacitor, inductor, diode. Uh, we have component over here. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and press component. Let's see if we've got anything there. Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Go ahead and tell you the secret. Come over here all the way to the right. There's voltage. Okay. So that's one way of doing it. The way I like to do it is like I said, I like using the shortcuts because it kind of makes it streamlined and makes the process very quick. You can press F2. F2 will bring up that component window, and then you can just type in volt 
or you can do voltage, whatever you want, and that'll take you over to the voltage source. Press enter, great. So now we've got this voltage source so we can move around with our mouse. Let's move it over here to this left side and then I'll just left click, places it, okay? So if you need to place multiple, you know you could do that. That's all well and good, uh, but we don't need multiple, we only need the one. So we'll do escape to get ourselves out of that uh, place the voltage source menu. So now we've got these extra ones, uh, so let's go ahead and get rid of them. The way we're gonna do that is, you know, oh, the way you can do that is that you can just press delete. So press delete on your keyboard, that'll bring up these scissors, and you can just come over here, click, 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 and that'll get rid of all of it, okay? So that's what we're gonna do here. So now we have our voltage source. Uh, so let me just go ahead and, I'll just make this full screen so we don't, we can just bounce back and forth. Okay, so we've got one resistor in series, okay? So what you can do is you can come up here and press resistor, okay? You can come up on the toolbar and press resistor. If you want, this is more complicated, I don't know why you would do it, but if it makes it easier for you, you could go to the component menu and press resistor, okay? There's also a second resistor symbol if you, if you need that for some reason. Um, but what I like to do, and what I think is the quickest way to do, just go to your keyboard, press R, okay? You press R, I'll bring up a resistor ready to place. You can place however many you want. So for this first resistor, for that 2 ohm resistor there, you can see that we have it going horizontally. So I like keeping my schematics nice and clean. That way I can understand them in the future. So I'm going to try and make this one as clean as possible. So I want this one to be horizontal. But if I right click, which is what's intuitive for me, uh, if I right click on it, it just makes it disappear. So what I found was that if you want to rotate it, so I'm going to tell you the secret so you don't have to figure it out. You just press Control-R. So Control-R is how you're going to rotate, uh, is, is how you're going to rotate any component on here. So Control-R, left click to place. Okay, and we're still in this resistor menu. So since we need to place a couple more, I figured let's go ahead and place them. Let's do the 10 ohm resistor next. So rotate it back by pressing Control-R. We can get it right here. Okay, so then the next one we have is a 20 ohm and 10 ohm resistor in parallel. So let's come down here. So you can use the mouse wheel. Uh, so scroll up on the mouse wheel to zoom out. It's a little, little backwards for me, but you know, you get used to it. Let's go ahead and place one here and one here. Okay, so now we have the 6 ohm and 4 ohm resistor in series over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place boom. Boom. Okay, so now we have all six of our resistors. Press escape to leave this menu. Okay, so we've got six resistors all laid out semi how we want it. We can tweak it here in a second. So now the next thing is we need to connect all of these. Okay, because right now, you know, my connections are red here. It means they're not connected. So what we need to do is connect these up. The way you're going to do that is you're going to use wire. Okay, so you can either press up there or press F3, whichever is easiest for you, and start placing. So you'll see that it has these vertical and horizontal dashed lines. Uh, so whenever I first did this, I wasn't really too sure about what they were for. Now I know. So what they're for is that whenever you're making your schematics, you typically want 90 degree bends, okay? And you, you typically want it to be as clean as possible. So you can see here, in this case, I have up, 90 degree bend to the right. You know, I'm not doing like multiple staircase bends or anything like that. It's very simple, very clean. So this is going to assist you with that because if you were to click this top node of the voltage source, bring it up, if you didn't have those dashed lines there, it'd be pretty hard to tell when you're aligned with the node of the resistor. But with those dashed lines, you can say, hey, right here, I'm perfectly aligned. So I'll go ahead and click. So that will, uh, what that click is going to do is that's going to make that first initial branch that we put that's going to make that set in stone so it won't move anymore go over to the second node of the resistor click all right so we've just laid our first branch we're going to follow a similar uh, we're going to follow a similar line for both of these or for all of these resistors click here bring it over we're aligned click again all right so let's go ahead and do r5 now let's connect r5 over here so we'll click on this little node drag it over here and now let's say we mess up and click over here okay so we don't have to undo anything all that has done is laid this 
initial, you know, all it's done is laid the initial uh, branch from R2 to R5, it set that in stone. We can still continue it over here to R5, click here, bring it down there. Okay. R5 to R6 is really easy. So now let's do R2 to R3. So I'm going to bring it down to here, click, bring it over here, click, bring it over down to R3, click. All right, and now we're done. So now let's do R2 to R4. So we've already got this first one laid, so I'll click here, bring it over to R4, click, down to R4, click. These bottom two, I'm gonna do a similar thing, except I'm just gonna kind of take a shortcut and just click, click, click. Those two are connected. Now I'll bring this down just a little bit so I have somewhere to sort of, because you know in this, in this schematic we brought them down together and then connected them. So that's what I'm going to do here, just kind of follow it. But now I've got this little branch here that I don't know what to do with. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do anything quite yet with it. So what I can do to get rid of this is I can just right click, okay, and that'll get me out of the current, uh, that'll get me out of the current branch that I'm laying. So now let's come over here, click the end of R6 bring it down, click, bring it all the way over to the left. Okay, so right now uh, what you could do is you could just click on, uh, you could just click on this node here and then bring it over. But what I wanna do is I'll just pass right over it, click, and you can see it automatically put a junction there for me. So that big black dot there, that's gonna be a junction and that means that, okay, this wire coming down and the wire going horizontally are connected. If you don't have that black dot there, then that means they're not connected. Uh, so. You know, for example, I'll give you an example. So let's go ahead and click and get it connected. If I had, you know, say a wire coming across this way, you can see that there's no black dot here. So that means these two wires, you know, the wire going horizontally and the wire going vertically are not connected. Okay. So let me, now we have that wire laid. We have that extra wire there. That doesn't look very good. We can just undo that. So you can either go to edit, undo, or you can just press F9. F9 is the shortcut for it. If you want to redo it, you press Shift F9, and then F9 is how you want to do it. Okay, so now we've got everything laid pretty pretty well. Uh, you know, there's a couple things I want to change here. So let's talk about how we can move things in the schematic. So up here, you can see that there's two different commands that kind of look like a move. So this first one is called move. The other one is called drag. So if we were to use move. Okay, we'll click on this voltage source. Let's say we want to scoot it down. If we click move and scoot it down, uh-oh, that wire is still there. So if we were to click it here, well, now that voltage source is covering the wire. Everything's a little weird. This isn't connected. You know, we kind of screwed some stuff up. So let's press F9 to undo that. Let's try out drag. So if we look at drag and we click on the voltage source, what that's going to do is that's going to drag the connecting wires with it too. So that's why it's called drag. It drags whatever you clicked on as well as the connections. Okay, so everything will stay connected and uh, works out pretty well. So I use drag uh, pretty frequently. And the shortcut for drag is to press F8. So let me get out of that. If I press F8, that'll bring me back to the drag menu. And if you need to use move, you can use F7 for that. Drag is going to be the closed fist. Uh, move is going to be the open hand. Okay, so drag, move, great. So everything else looks pretty nice. So if we compare it to this other schematic, it looks fairly similar, okay? So now, you can see here we don't we haven't given it any values yet. We have a V here, R's for all of these, and the simulation software isn't gonna know what that means, okay? So what we need to do is we need to uh, move all these values over to the simulation software. So let's start with the 16 volt source. You can either put 16 or 16 V for volts, doesn't matter, the simulation will be able to tell the difference. So I'll just go ahead and put 16V. Here, we can do two. Uh, there's no really good way to do the ohm symbol in this yet, so uh, we can just leave it as two. Okay, so now let's go back. We have a 10 ohm, 20 ohm, and 10 ohm. So let's make this 10, 20, and 10. So what you can see is that there's a couple of different ways to change the value on this. So let's, you know, let's look at R5. Okay. R5 is a 6 ohm resistor. So let's look at R5. We could either click on this R and change it to 6. So, sorry, not click on the R, right click on the R, change it to 6. Or what we could do is we could click on the resistor itself 
and you can see here that'll bring up a menu that says resistance, tolerance, power rating. So this is, if we right click on R, that's only changing R. If we right click on the resistor, that opens up the resistor menu and then we can change the resistance there. Okay. Really, same thing, regardless. It's gonna do the same thing, but you know, say for example, you wanted to change some, you know, you want to add a series resistance to this voltage source, you could do that there. Or you can even, you know, click advance to get into this other stuff, but you know, we're not gonna look at that quite yet. We'll come back to that later. So right now, um, we have everything, all the values laid out. Okay, but now there's one thing that's kind of a little unintuitive, okay? So remember, whenever we were kind of analyzing everything, we typically said that, you know, this, the negative node of the voltage source is going to be ground. So we would call that zero volts. We need to tell the simulation software that that's what we're going to call zero volts. Okay, so, uh, you know, you'll understand this a little bit more in the next video whenever we talk about some of the more powerful methods of circuit analysis. But for now, all you need to know is that we can place a ground here and you know let's wire that up and what that's going to do is that's going to tell the simulator that this branch here you know this 16 volt branch or sorry not 16 volt the negative uh, the negative node of the source and this whole thing this is all ground okay so that's all zero volts and that's always going to be zero volts okay so that provides it a baseline so, you know, for example, it could say, all right, I know this is zero volts, so if we're rising by 16 volts, this must be 16 volts over here. Okay, so now we've gotten everything pretty much laid out. So previously, we found um, all these different answers here. Okay, so we, let's see, gosh, my writing's a little messy, but I think, I think we'll make it work. Okay, so we got all these answers here. We want to verify this, so we went ahead and made it in the simulation software. So what we can do is now, we said we got it all laid out, we told it everything it needs to know, let's click run to simulate it. Well, actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and save this, that way we don't lose our progress. So up here you can see that it gave it a default name, draft6.asc. If I were to just hit control S or save, it would save it in the default folder as draft6.asc. That's not a really good naming convention, at least for me. You might like it. I don't. So what I'll do is I'll hit save as, save it as circuit analysis.asc. You don't have to put the .asc. So I'm just going to save it as circuit analysis. That changed the name, and now I can hit control S. No problem. So we've got this circuit. We want to simulate it. So let's come up here and click run. So now this is going to bring up the simulation command. And the reason we have this is because we need to tell it what kind of simulation we want to do. Because we can, you know, there's a whole bunch of different simulations we can do. Um, some of them are more advanced. You know, we'll talk about some of the different ones. Uh, but for right now, you know, let's stick with uh, the most simple. Okay. I think the most simple is transient. So transient, it just means as time passes. So you, what you have to do is you have to tell it when to start, when to stop and how big of a step it's allowed to take in time. Because, you know, computers, they don't work with continuous time, you know, they're not able to you know, work that way, so we have to tell it the maximum step it can take, because it takes discrete steps in time. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll just say stop time is one second. The time to start saving data, that's our start time, we're going to make that zero. The maximum time step, doesn't really matter for this, so I'm just going to go ahead and make it something big, like 100 milliseconds, because, you know, the the values are going to stay the same regardless of time because it's just a DC circuit. And now we can hit OK. OK. Well, now that we have this new window open, this is kind of a little hard to see, so let's click on our circuit analysis window. We could hit the zoom to rectangle button, but what I like to do is hit zoom full extents, and that just shows us everything in the circuit. Okay, and it fits it all on the screen. Works really nice. OK, so now let's let's check the first thing so let's check this note here previously we expected it to be you know we wrote here 16 volts so we expect it to be 16 volts here click on it well the pattern the pattern is or the sorry the y-axis is a little messed up you know we can change that if you want to right click on it and change it but it's in between 15.999 and 16.002 and 16 volts okay so we've got 16 volts here and this other one we said we would have 12.12 volts over here. Okay, 12.12 volts. Let's check over here. 
looks, you know, we we had to round a little bit, but just about 12.12. All right, so we're we're doing pretty good okay so far. So we're verifying all of our answers are correct. Last time we said we'd had 1.94 amps coming out of this voltage source. So if I want to check the current through this source, what I'll do is I'll hover over it. You can see that there's a little uh, circle with the arrow going through it. Uh, we can click on that. Uh-oh, now we're getting negative numbers. We didn't get a negative number here. So let's look at the explanation for this. So if we, you know, if I, if we take a little bit of a closer look, if we look at the arrow on that, you know, on our mouse, if we look at the arrow that it's pointing, it's pointing down. Okay, but in here we had our arrow pointing up. Okay, so remember, current has a direction. So if we have a negative current, this is saying we have a negative current going down, which pretty much means we have a positive current going up. Okay, so we have a positive current of about negative 1.94 amps, or sorry, we have a positive current of 1.94 amps. So that looks just about what we expected. Okay, so let's see. We had 12.12 volts here. Boom, okay. If I wanted to display, you know, 16 volts and 12.12 volts, uh, you just click, you know, 16 volt one time, click the 12 volt one time, or let's say, you know, let's say I only wanted to look at this one and I wanted to look at it in fine detail, just double click on it. If you double click on one of these nodes, it'll show only that node. The first click will pull it up, second click will erase everything else so you can look at it in more detail. Okay, so this is 12 volts here. Uh, let's see what the voltage is at this point. So. Before we thought it would be 4.84. It's about 4.84. Yeah, you know we're getting a little, a little more rounding error, but it's about 4.84. Let's check the voltage here. 4.84 again, just about. Oh, 4.82. You can see we're getting a little bit, we're getting a little bit further away. But this is why we use the simulation software. This gives us the exact answers, whereas it's more practical for us to use approximates sometimes whenever we're doing, uh, whenever we're doing circuit analysis on paper. So now, you can see here that uh, we said we have 3.88 volts across this resistor. Okay? So here, we haven't figured out a way to show 3.88 volts. We have 16 volts, we have you know, about 12.12 volts, but how can we show 3.88? Okay, so the way we can do that here, so I'll go up here. If you want to delete a trace, you can just click on the uh, trace window, press delete. That'll bring up these gold scissors, and just click on the trace up at the top. That'll delete it. Okay, so escape to get out of that. If I want to see just the voltage across this resistor, so that's going to be the 16 volts minus the 12.12 volts, what I have to do is I'll get my probe. Okay, so here you can see we have that red probe on the resistor. I'll click it, okay, click it, and then what I'm going to do is drag over here. So I'm saying I'm measuring across this resistor. So the red, red probe and the black probe is measuring the voltage across that resistor. Very similar to a multimeter. Okay, So this is how you would do it in the multimeter. This is how we do it in LT spice. Okay, And you can see we've got just about 3.88 volts, which tells us that what we did was right. Okay, so now we're still, we're still looking good. Let's check the current through this 10 ohm resistor. We said it was uh, 727 milliamps. That's about 707.73 amps. Current through here is about 485. Let's see, about 0.48. Yeah, so that's about right. Let's check the current here, uh, 0 0.24, 0 0.24. Okay, great. Let's check the current through both of these, 1.212, 1.21. Okay, great. So this is just confirming to me that all the work I did on this piece of paper, all the work I did by hand is correct. So we can say that this schematic that we've made and the, the work we did by hand is correct. And we can kind of play around with this schematic and see what would happen and just kind of sanity check our answers. Okay? Because you know, sometimes there might be a small mistake that you don't see and this provides you an avenue to say, ah, that's what I did wrong. And you can probe around in the circuit, see what's happening, you know, see what the current is, where the problem is. So this is a very, very, very powerful piece of software that works really I mean really well for the price you know which is free <laughs> you know you can't beat free and really they just did an outstanding job with this software this is something that I really recommend to everybody so the last thing we're going to do before we go and before we finish up this video I'm going to say you know that whole transient analysis thing that was fine 
but we really didn't need to see you know the a graph versus time because nothing was really changing over time so we didn't really need to see any of that so if you wanted to provide you know a simpler look what you can do is I can come down here right click this uh, spice directive at the bottom and instead of using transient what I can do is I can go over here all the way to the right and it says DC op point DC operating point and this is going to say it'll compute the DC operating point treating capacitances as open circuits and inductions as short circuits yeah yeah stuff we don't need to know DC operating point okay. so we can just click OK you can see it changes that simulation command now if we run it it's going to tell us the voltage at all of our nodes the current through all of the different devices that we have okay now that's not really useful to us well I mean it is useful but we want to see it on the schematic okay because we don't know what node one is so what we can do is we can right click a node so right click the wires that we've made place or hit place op data label and boom it puts the voltage right there for us do the same thing over here you know I'll, I'll scoot it over a little bit place op data label 12.12 yeah you can see there's a there's a little bit of the error that we had so 12.12 volts here place it there 4.84 volts you know you can do this everywhere do this really everywhere and just kind of annotate your schematic and this could be a little bit handier so let's say we change it to a 12 volt source okay so then we can run it close that and look it automatically changes everything okay? so this simulation software really does um, expedite the design process makes it a whole whole lot easier uh, to design these circuits and especially more complex circuits you know that uh, it's a little bit harder to work out on hand this makes it very very easy so really for me anytime I'm going to build something what I'll do is I'll simulate it first make sure that uh, everything I'm thinking is correct is actually correct and then once I get a good simulation I'll say alright now let's build it now that I've uh, gotten a chance to kind of work out all my mistakes in a in a low stakes area you know before I've actually wasted time building something so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more of this content. Otherwise, uh, I'm Aaron Carmen. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.